Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today I am going to be sharing with you my December TBR. I have been so excited to film this TBR video. I am very, very excited for the books that I have picked for this month. It is a lot of books but I'm excited for them. So like a lot of people, I love Christmas. It is my favorite holiday. This is my absolute favorite time of the year. And I knew going into this month that if there was a Christmas readathon out there, I was going to participate. <laughs> so in preparation for this month, I literally pulled up YouTube and searched for Christmas readathons 2020 just to see if any Christmas readathons did actually exist. And yes, there are several Christmas readathons that I could be participating in for the month of December. There were several to choose from, but I went with the one that I thought was the most simple readathon, but also probably the most ambitious readathon. So I do have a fairly extensive TBR for this month. The Christmas readathon that I will be participating in for this month is called Merry Bookmas. It is hosted by three different booktubers and I will go ahead and link those announcement videos down in the description box for you if you are interested in checking them out and perhaps participating as well. I also want to say that Bookmas is the same name as a different booktube Christmas challenge where booktubers can post 12 videos, 12 YouTube videos for the 12 days of Christmas and there are like 12 different video challenges. That is not the one that I am talking about. I will not be posting 12 videos through the month of December. However, the readathon Mary Bookmas does have 12 reading challenges. So I am planning on attempting to read 12 books for the month of December. This is the most books I will have ever read in a single month in my entire life. I know that I only started my booktube channel this past October, so I've really only been on here for about a month now, but since I started sort of getting back into reading earlier this year, I did set myself a Goodreads challenge goal to read 35 books by the end of the year, and I need exactly 12 more books to meet that goal. So I thought that this was perfect. You know, this particular readathon has 12 Christmassy reading prompts. If I can fit a book for each of those prompts and actually read all of them by the end of the month, then I will have met my 35 book goal for the end of 2020. So I thought, what the heck, you know, if I don't read all the books, I don't read all the books, but why not go ahead and set that goal for myself? That way, if I do get through all of them, then I will have met my yearly goal as well. And so let's just see if I can do it. The hosts of this particular readathon, Mary Bookmas, did say that you are allowed to double up on the different prompts and read one book for multiple challenges, but you know, we're just gonna do all 12. So I have picked 12 books for 12 different reading prompts for this month, and I'm going to share them with you right now in this video. Prompt number one is a partridge in a pear tree. Read a book with a bird, a fruit, or a tree on the cover or in the title. The book I will be reading for this prompt is The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden, and this is the first book in the Winter Night Trilogy. This book fits the prompt because it does have the word nightingale in the title, which is a kind of bird, but if you look close, there are also trees. So yeah, perfect for this prompt. This is a very wintry fantasy novel that takes place in medieval Russia and draws on a lot of Russian folklore and fairy tales. It's also kind of funny that I'm picking this one up and it is the bear and the nightingale. It's wintry. It takes place in Russia. It's a fantasy. It's based on Russian folklore. And I literally just finished reading the Girl Who Speaks Bear, which is a middle grade, but it is also a fantasy, and it is also based on Russian folklore, so 
it's just weird that I kind of picked these two up so close to each other, but this one was good. It's a middle grade. Uh, I think that I'm gonna maybe enjoy the young adult adults better, so I'm excited for this one. Also, Jade from JD Ray Reads is hosting a mini polar thon this month where you can participate by reading a polar fantasy. So I think that I'm going to also double up and use this one as my read for that sort of mini readathon that I will also be completing in the month of December. Prompt number two is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer read a red book or a book with the color red on the cover and I am going to be reading A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. This is another sort of young adult, new adult fantasy. As I've mentioned before, like I'm not a huge fantasy reader. Usually I tend to gravitate towards contemporary, but as you will see throughout this video, I am jumping on the fantasy train and I am going to be attempting several fantasy novels this month, this being one of them. I think the simplest way to explain what this book is about is to just say that it is basically a Beauty and the Beast retelling. We have 19-year-old Feyre who is captured by this fairy. She's captured by him and, shocker, they fall in love with each other. And I hear it gets pretty steamy. I'm here for it. I am here for it. Prompt number three is Silent Night. Don't judge a disability by its visibility. Read a book with disability representation. For this prompt, I am going to be reading Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, and I am so excited for this book. This one follows the story, obviously, of Chloe Brown, who actually suffers from a chronic illness that gives her a lot of chronic pain and so this is a great example of a character with an invisible disability and so we get some of that representation in this book which I think is awesome. Basically we're told that Chloe has a near-death experience that sort of makes her realize that her life is kind of boring and she creates a list of all of the things that she wants to do to get a life. <laughs> of course, in the process of that, she meets a guy and romance ensues. So if you were not aware, this is very much a romance novel and I am here for it. <laughs> Basically, I just like can't hear enough good things about this book. Everyone is raving about this one or has been for the past year. And so I am finally getting to this one and I am very, very very excited to read this. Prompt number four is I have a little dreidel. Read a book that includes a game. For this prompt, I am going to be reading Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is another one of those fantasies that I just kept hearing about as I watched booktube this year and I want to read it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is another like young adult, new adult fantasy novel. I'm also pretty sure that it's a standalone, so it's not part of any like extended fantasy series. Basically, it's about this circus that just sort of magically pops up in random places and behind the scenes there is this like deadly competition between two magicians. A shocker, once again they fall in love with each other. Also flipping through just now, I realized that this takes place in like the 1800s, which I'm not sure I was aware of, but that's fine. So basically this is another one of those fantasy romance novels that I am excited to try. Prompt number five is I'll be home for book miss. Read a book in your favorite cozy spot at home. Which I like this prompt because it leaves it entirely open for you to pick whatever kind of read you want as long as you're reading it in a cozy spot. So I went for what I think will be an easier read. <laughs> and that is the first collection of the Avatar The Last Airbender series. This one is called The Promise and it is a collection so it contains several comics but I mean, comics are just a lot easier to get through because there's not a lot of text. So I figure this would be a good one to just sort of read in my cozy spot and hopefully get through fairly quickly so that I can 
also fit in some of the books that I know are going to take me a little longer to read this month. So, apparently, like everything else, I was late to the Avatar train, and I did not watch the series until it came on to Netflix this summer, and I binged the whole thing, and I loved it. So, immediately after having finished the series, I ordered the comics, because these comics actually pick up where the animated series leaves off, so I was really excited to continue with the series through the comics, especially before watching The Legends of Korra, which is also now on Netflix, and I haven't watched those yet because I want to read these first. And I did actually start this over the summer, but then school started and I put it down and I haven't picked it back up yet, so I thought that this would be a good one to pick back up for this readathon. And if I do really like this one, I have also already purchased the next collection in the series, so maybe that will be something that I jump into in January. Prompt number six is Baby It's Cold Outside, read a cozy book, which I'm sure there are also lots of interpretations of what a cozy book is. <laughs> for my cozy read, I decided to go for a Christmas romance novel called Comfort and Joy by Kristen Hanna. I would maybe say that Kristen Hanna is one of my favorite authors, even though there are so many of her books that I have not actually read yet. I have read a handful of her books, and the ones that I have read I've really enjoyed. My favorite of hers is definitely Firefly Lane, which I know is a favorite for a lot of people, and it's being made into a Netflix series which I am super excited for. So I've had this one on my shelf. It's one that I think I started maybe like a couple Christmases ago and I just never finished it. So I thought this would be a good one to pick up as a cozy read. Basically, it's about a character named Joy, of course, and she is newly divorced. She's not really sure what to do with herself and she ends up meeting this guy and his young son. And according to the back, it says, Thrown together by chance, these three souls will be touched by the true spirit of Christmas and discover what it means to be a family. So basically, it's going to be like a nice Hallmark-style Christmas romance, probably. And I'm here for it, 100%. <laughs> Prompt number seven is, All I Want for Christmas is You. Read a romance or a book featuring a group of friends and... You know your girl is going for another romance, and not just any romance. We're going to be reading another Christmas romance. This is actually a new release, which is really exciting. It is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, and I mentioned this in one of my other videos, but I just learned recently that Christina Lauren is actually two people. It is a writing duo of women who tend to write a lot of romance, I think also wrote The Unhoneymooners, which was really, really popular last year, and that is another one that I am hoping to read. Considering that this one is a Christmas romance and it is Christmas time, you know I'm going to be reading this one. Basically for this one, she keeps like reliving the same Christmas holiday over and over again, and it's just like one hilarious disaster after another. I am also pretty sure that there's going to be a love triangle in this romance because it does say one Christmas wish, two brothers, and a lifetime of hope are on the line. Oh my gosh. Regardless, it's a romance, so I'm sure it's going to have a happy ending. Whether or not I agree with who she ends up with, we shall see. We shall see. Prompt number eight is Happy Kwanzaa, read a book by or about a person of color. And for this prompt, I am going to be reading Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, and I'm very excited for this one. Trevor Noah is a comedian from South Africa, and this is his memoir of growing up in South Africa, especially during apartheid and the impacts that that system had on him and his family and growing up. I really love Trevor Noah. I think that his humor is just fantastic and so smart, and I'm very excited to see how he sort of weaves in his humor with a lot of the serious topics that I know he's probably going to be talking about in this book. Plus, 
I know that this audiobook is actually narrated by him, so I am 100% getting the audiobook so that I can listen to him read this story. I'm just a big fan of memoirs that are actually read by the author, or just books in general that are read by the author, because then they're able to like perform the story or tell the story in the way that they intended it to be told. And this is also just another one that's been on my shelf for a while, and I want to actually read it. Prompt number nine is my favorite things. Read a book featuring your favorite trope. And for this prompt, I'm going to be reading Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Does this book look familiar? I'm already going to be reading Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and then I'm also going to be reading Take a Hint, Danny Brown. The way in which they are connected is Chloe Brown and Danny Brown are sisters, and I do believe that they appear in each other's stories, and I have heard just fantastic things about both of these. So I love that I am able to fit both of them into this readathon. Excited. As far as meeting the prompt for this one, the favorite trope that this book includes is a fake relationship. So it's another romance. We have Danny Brown who has sort of given up on romance. She doesn't think she wants a romantic relationship. She's looking for something more casual. But then she finds herself in a situation where she is faking a relationship with this guy. And guess what? They fall in love for real. I'm excited for this one. Prompt number 10 is last book, miss. Read a book that was published in the year 2019. The book I am reading for this prompt is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelidis. I think I'm saying that right. Michaelidis? 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 This is another thriller and I am super excited. I have heard such good things about this one. I've heard that there are like major plot twists that you don't see coming. So basically it's about this woman who has a seemingly normal life until she shoots her husband in the face five times and then stops speaking. She just goes silent and won't talk to anyone and she ends up being admitted to like this psychiatric institution. The story is told from the perspective of her psychotherapist who is trying to talk to her and like get her to talk to figure out what the heck actually happened. Also, I am hoping to be buddy reading this one with my brother's girlfriend, Leah. She actually saw that I owned this book in one of my previous booktube videos and she was like, oh my gosh, I wanna read that, we should read it together. So yeah, I'm just really excited to jump into another thriller for this month. Prompt number 11 is underneath the tree, read a book that was gifted to you or gift yourself a new book and read that one. So the one that I picked for this prompt is yet another fantasy novel that I have heard so much about on booktube and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I'm basically counting this one for this prompt because I did technically gift this book to myself about a month ago and I haven't read it yet so this is another one that I am excited to jump into and see if I like the whole fantasy thing. This is another YA fantasy I believe and it is also the start of a fantasy series. Is it a trilogy? It's either a trilogy or it's a series. I also just read City of Bones by V.E. Schwab this past month for Believeathon. This is another one that I thought was good, but I probably didn't like it as much just because it's a middle grade. So I'm excited to try one of her like older novels and see if it's something that I still like. Basically, this book takes place in four parallel Londons that exist in four alternate worlds and we follow a character named Kel who is one of the last magicians capable of traveling between these different Londons. This is another fantasy that I want to say takes place in like the late 1700s early 1800s. I don't know what it is with me this month reading all of these like historical fantasy novels. I don't know. If, I, if I'm not like digging this genre, then I don't know what I'm gonna do this month. I don't know if there's like a romance element in this. I have no idea. Usually that tends to be the thing, but I don't remember if that's something that actually happens in this book. I know that he does meet a girl, but that does not mean anything, so. 
And prompt number 12 is I want to wish you a merry book miss. Read the group book or buddy read a book. So I'm not going to be reading the group book for this readathon, but I am going to be doing another buddy read with my friend Taylor. And we are going to be reading The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek by Rhett McLaughlin and Link Neal. These guys are actually the hosts of Good Mythical Morning, and I will link their channel down below if you are unfamiliar with their videos, but they actually wrote a novel together, and I think it's loosely based on, like, them as kids, especially because the, their names are Rhett and Link, and the characters' names are Rex and Leaf. So I think that they sort of use themselves as their inspiration for these characters. It takes place in the 1990s and it's a mystery thriller and the blurb on the back says fans of John Green and Stranger Things take note. So like John Green meets Stranger Things like what? I am here for this. I'm very excited that Taylor picked this one for this month. Last month we read The Woman in the Window, which was my pick for our thriller buddy read. And so this month she picked this one, and this is probably a book that I would not have otherwise ever heard of had she not picked it. So I am hoping that we will like this one and that it will be another good buddy read for us. Oh my gosh. So... <laughs> These are all of the books that I am hoping to read for the Merry Bookmas Readathon for the month of December. Will I read all of them? Who knows? <laughs> it is a rather ambitious TBR, but we will see if I will be able to read all of these books and hopefully meet my Goodreads reading goal for this year, which is a total of 35 books. These 12 are the 12 that I need in order to meet that goal. So let me know down in the comments if you have read any of these books and if you have, which of them do you think I should read first? Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Christmas reading, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.